Okay, well, welcome. So, I'm a lean maniac, and when I get up and speak in front of people for the past year or so, I've always started my talks by saying, I have a true confession, and that is, I don't like lean. And that's a problem, because I'm at a lean conference. I don't like lean. I love lean. It is absolutely awesome. When I see the people come up here and get the awards and Karen get the awards, I go, yes! Somebody gets it, that this is the most transformative idea that you could ever embrace. It's not perfect, but it is the best thing I've ever found if you want operational excellence. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about some incredibly cool stuff that I've seen in my travels around the world and organizations that have just really done some fantastic things. Now, I wanna start off by telling you what is Two Second Lean. So in 60 seconds, I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm gonna talk about for the next hour. Isn't that cool? That's lean. Now, I did that in a very lean method. Uh, for those of you who know anything about me, I'm like an iPhone and Apple maniac. This is my iPhone. This thing is the most powerful tool you could ever have. So I pulled it out and I opened up the voice memo program and I recorded in 60 seconds what I thought two second lean was. Because I get people asking me all the time, what is two second lean? So I recorded it real quick, da 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 da. And then I found out because I'm a techie person and I hang out with some young people that always keep me abreast of everything that's going on cool about this company called, or this website called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Raise your hand if you've heard of it, Fiverr. There's only a few of you out there. It's very cool. Basically, they do all these little cool tech things and videos and anything you want for five bucks. So for five bucks, they'll create this really cool thing for you. So I pulled out my iPhone because I'm a lean guy. Da -da -da, didn't have my audio crew do it and recorded what Two Second Lean is. Then I sent that file along with a couple images to Fiverr and they made this video for me. So 60 seconds, you're going to find out every thing Two Second Lean is about, and for five bucks. You ready? Here you go. What is Two Second Lean? It is simple. I took a world-class business concept practiced by the top companies in the world, Toyota, Harley-Davidson, Porsche, and made it fun and easy so anyone could tap into the power of daily continuous improvement. There are three easy steps to become a powerful lean thinker. First, learn the eight ways. Overproduction, transportation, inventory, defects, overprocessing, motion, waiting, wasted human potential. Then you will see these different wastes everywhere and it will drive you crazy. Second, you will be compelled to eliminate the waste you now see and make improvements every day that removes the waste in your life. Make it the first thing you do every day. Small, consistent, tiny, two second improvements all hooked together day after day adds up to mountains of more free time, friend time, and play time. You see, there's nothing cool about being wasteful, and there is everything cool about becoming a lean thinker. Third, pull out your smartphone and shoot a quick video to show your improvements to your friends, family, and co-workers. That's it. Prepare to experience the power of becoming a lean thinker. Pretty simple, pretty cheap. Five bucks, not bad for five bucks, right? Isn't that crazy? That's being a lean thinker. We're using our wits and not our wallet. Very simple, if you get the idea. So all we wanna do is learn the eight waste. We wanna see waste. It'll drive you crazy and then make small little improvements. Don't wait to, to do a Kaizen event. Don't do a Kaizen event. You got more waste going on in your life than you could ever imagine. Right then and there when you see the waste. Start eliminating it. And then if you really want to take it to the next level and you want to supercharge it, you pull out your phone and you say, this is the current state and this is the improvement. You start showing that to people, they're going to be inspired. That's all I've done. That is all FastCap has done. We have made thousands of videos based on the model I just told you. We teach people to see the eight ways. We fix what bugs us. Small little improvements, little stupid improvements, you're going to see some of them. And we make a video set the world on fire. It's that simple. But people like to make it complicated. So my goal, everything I do is simple. There's nothing, you can't extract anything difficult out of me. I don't do it. It's for you to see waste. 
like you've never seen it before. It should, man, it should go, oh my gosh, I had no idea there was so much waste. When you see this waste, man, it should be like, ah! It's everywhere. It's everywhere in your life. You don't need to be looking at anyone else and saying, oh, Bob and Mary, they got all the waste. If that department would only figure it out, just go like this. You got it all going on right here. You never need to point to anybody for the rest of your life. You have all the waste in the world for the next 10 lifetimes. Sort it out on your own. I know that's what I have. It's staggering the amount of waste. Now, I want to introduce you to my team. This is a team of people. I only have 50 employees. Very small company. I know there's huge companies here. We're a little nothing company. But these are the ones that make all these incredible two-second improvements every day. So every day when we come to work, we have a simple kata, a routine that is non-negotiable. We sweep, polish our factory floor. It's spotless. We sort, we get all the crap out of our work area that shouldn't be there. So the only thing that's in the work area is the things we need. And we create clear standards and processes by which we do our work. So work is always easy. In the process of doing those three things for the first half hour, we find lots of things to make improvements, so we all make a one or small two-second improvement. Now, our people are making improvements all day long, but it's mandatory to make an improvement before we ever work. That's the way our people think. So they're always seeing waste all day long. They're always looking for opportunities to improve. Then we meet as a team. We have a morning meeting where we all stand up, generally lasts a half hour to 45 minutes. We do all kinds of crazy things like study history, the Constitution. We stretch. We look at all of our sales numbers, every mistake we've made, all the improvements we've made. We have a nice big dashboard. We review a whole lot of things, whether or not we missed a single Kanban. And then we work. If you get the and then, you'll master lean. Because lean is the first thing we do. It is not an incidental thing. It is not something that FastCap does. It is who we are. Period, from start to finish. We're not a product development company. We're a lean company that happens to do product development. And that's the way we view lean. So I want to show you what our company looks like. Again, we're a very simple, simple company. I shot this video three months after we moved into our new facility. So the facility doesn't look anything like this anymore. It's way, way better, way nicer. But it's after three months and so many people wanted to come tour us when we moved into our new facility. I couldn't deal with all the tours. So I just said, hey, I pulled out my iPhone. It's a very cheesy video. There's nothing fancy about this. And I just showed people, this is what it looks like. This is what our kind of like dream facility looks like. So here you go. This is FastCap. Well, hello everyone. It's time to take a tour of FastCap. FastCap is located in Bellingham, Washington, just about two hours north of Seattle, up in a little tiny town called Ferndale, right on I-5. It's a beautiful place. We have about a 50,000 square foot facility. It's just a really, really cool place to work. About 110 windows, lots of natural light everywhere coming in. We're going to take you inside. Now remember, it's simple. It's not fancy. So when you get inside, just a big overview, we got three big ass fans keeping everything cool and lots of natural light everywhere. When you walk in the front door, it's all stand up. We made all the desks out of our fast pipe system. Everything's simple. Now people always say, well, do people like to stand up? We wouldn't have it any other way. Is it difficult to stand up? Sure, it takes a little time to get used to it, but we love it. Everything's on wheels. Everything's flexible, including the filing cabinet. Conference room, very simple, stand up, no chairs. The meetings don't last very long. Our graphic design area, again, everything's stand up. Everything's on wheels. Everything's flexible. We want to be flexible because our needs are always changing. All our tools are carefully shadowed. We never search for anything. We never struggle. Because the minute you struggle, you have waste. Our main production line, everything flowing towards the shipping terminals. You'll see how that works here in just a minute. It's very cool. See, that's an aisle where the product is made, flows down to the area where we package it. People are in the cells. They pick, package, and ship. Everything two hours, fax to truck. It's pretty amazing. So this is our shadow board of all the products that we make. So we do lateral thinking. We walk up, we look at it and say, hey, we've made a part like that before. This is our CNC area where we make all of our molds. All of our toolboxes are carefully shadowed out with our Kaizen foam system. 
It makes all the difference in the world when you take the time to make this happen. Now, the way this looks like this is every day we make an improvement. These are our injection molding machines, they're Sumitomos, they're really high tech, they're very cool, they have robots on them to remove the parts. All the tools again are shattered out for the Sumitomos. These are all of our injection molds down below with the parts actually magnetically attached to them. These are all the colorants and materials that we use with Kanban cards. And the way we accomplish all this is so simple. We sweep, sort, and standardize everything in the morning when we come in. Everyone makes one improvement. We have a morning meeting, we build a culture, and then we work. And I am fully engaged in the process. The leader has to be engaged. You gotta keep lean simple and make it fun. The rest is history. Nice. Never forget, lean is simple and fun. So a very simple facility, very flexible, everything's on wheels. It's just kind of crazy how simple we keep everything. There aren't a lot of posters on the wall. There's no signs or, or gimmicks saying do this or do that. Everything in lean is embedded in our hearts and brains. Our people know this backwards and forwards. Not because there's slogans on the walls, there's charts and graphs showing how we're doing. I mean, it's so obvious how we're doing, it's unbelievable. So the goal is to see waste like you've never seen it before. So one hour from now, if you walk out of here and you're, you've been recalibrated, your brain has been readjusted to see waste like you've never seen it before, we win. I like to illustrate how to see waste by showing a tire change. So, you know, changing the tire on a car can be a little bit cumbersome. I mean, if I got a flat tire right now, I would not go, oh yeah, this is gonna be great. It's gonna be an easy process. I know I'd go in the back and try to figure it all out and look for the directions. The directions would be convoluted and I'd probably struggle with it. And if I asked you how long it would take you to change the tire in your car, you know, I get answers everywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour to 45 minutes. People say 45 minutes, half hour to get all the crap out of the back of my car and then 15 minutes to figure out the process, half hour for, you know, AAA to come, you know, you get all the answers, right? But if you really stop and think about a tire change on a car, it's really a clunky process. You know, it's not very easy to do. I don't know many people have said, oh, I changed the tire on my car and it was easy. I actually got a flat tire on my Porsche the other day and it took me four hours to change the tire because when I went to change the tire, there was no tire. By the time I had AAA come out in the middle of Idaho, it took me four hours to get the tire changed. I actually lost the whole day because I had to get a new tire to bring it out and everything else. It's just a bad process. And it's really a great illustration of what a lot of the processes are like in your organization, frankly, and in my organization as well. And if we understand that most of our processes are really not very good, everything changes. So I'm gonna illustrate with a great tire change and a bad tire change, but first, Let's watch the bad tire change. This is what we're doing to our customers. So remember, this guy is the customer right there. Now, is he happy? He wants to be racing around the track. That's his value added activity. This guy's just standing there. Yep, yep, yep just standing there. How many of your people are just kind of like standing there? Yep. This guy wants to be racing around the track. Yep. Oh man, that's a bummer. Wow, little defect, little waste, right? So now let's take a look at world class, okay? Now, I gotta be cautious, but I, this is the world I live in. I mean, this is the world that I live in at Fast. Is it perfect? It's not perfect, we're so bad, it's unbelievable. On a scale of one to 100, Toyota's a 99, we're a three. We're a total joke next to Toyota, a total joke. But I experience operational excellence every day at my company because my people are making such cool improvements. And this is really kind of the world that I live in. So this is a great tire change. So contrast that to what you just saw. And tell me if you want to be in a part the of this lane, team. Out of everybody. This is Fernando Alonso's stop. Uh, it was actually the fastest single stop. And look at the guys. They look so relaxed. But there he goes. Uh, all four wheels changed. Just a mere and three seconds. 3.3 yeah. seconds. And they do it faster now, a, too. Now, I want you to watch and see whether or not these this people are all stressed Alonso's out. Stop. Does Lee make you all stressed uh, out? You have to work really fast. Look at these stop. guys. Look how relaxed they are. Boom. The perfect team. Perfect process. Boom, boom, boom. Done. 3.3 seconds. That's the way work should be. If you're struggling with something, you're wasting like crazy. It should just be like water, just flow. 
That's what we want. So the other day we had a YPO walk at our company and Cambridge Man Manufacturing, they're here, John and his team are here, and they were walking through our facility and they met Austin and Austin was showing them how we build a laser jam and they observed that Austin was struggling uh, opening the case. <gasps> opening the case was a struggle. Most people wouldn't even recognize that as a struggle, but of course Cambridge Manufacturing, they're, they're lean maniacs and they get it. So they saw that, that our lean company was struggling and we didn't say, hey, you know what, we know what we're doing, you're learning from us. We said, wow, you know what, you're right. We humbly said, you're right, we, we don't know what we're doing. We're a three, Toyota's a 99, we get it. And so the next day after they left, Austin came up with an idea on how to improve the process. So you're gonna see the current state and now you're gonna see the improvement. And tell me if it doesn't kind of resemble that tire change you just saw. You ready? Don't blink. So Austin, show me your great new improvement. In laser jam, to start the case, we have to open it up and always have to fumble around with this. It's really difficult. Four latches, a little Oh, cumbersome. that's difficult. Isn't that a pain? Oh, wow, really that's so terrible. Check this out. Wes from the YPO gave me this great idea about how to open the hinges. Very simple, close the case really simple. Look at that, all closed, all nice and easy to go. One motion. One motion. Amazing job. Thanks, Wes. That's the way we think. Pretty cool, isn't it? It's awesome. That's why I love lean, because this is what it produces, operational excellence all day long. Whenever we go to do anything, we're not struggling. We need to take a picture of a photograph, boom, we open the drawer, the camera's right there in the perfect place, boom. We need a Sharpie, the Sharpie's right there. We need a knife, the knife's right there. We need a tool, the tool's right there. It's perfectly labeled. We know exactly what we need, where it is, when we need it. We're not struggling. We've refined our processes so we can use our brain for high level work, not stupid work of clumsy processes because everything is a process but you know what there's a group of us unfortunately out there that we'd rather just do things the old-fashioned way so here's a quick little video to illustrate the way a lot of people think hey Matt what are you doing just working have you ever thought about maybe like using a hammer? I mean, a what? A hammer. What is it? It'll make your job and your life a lot easier. That rock looks a little maybe like archaic. Hey, it's been working for me up to this point. I'm gonna keep using this. I don't have time. Just... Yeah, some of you might even be using your forehead still. You haven't even got the rock thing going, you know? I, I don't know. But, you know, this is some of the stuff that's going on. Now you think I'm being ridiculous right now. Well, guess what, I'm not. I'm gonna show you a rock right now, you ready? I'm gonna show you a rock from a billion dollar company. Should make you shake. Delta Airlines, this is their airline ticket. Kinda looks like a rock to me, doesn't it to you? You wanna figure out what gate you have to be at, what zone you have to be at, what time you have to board. This is crazy. This is a rock. Now, when I got that ticket, I'm dyslexic and I'm a C and D student. I struggle. I looked at that and I said, gosh, I'm, I'm going to miss my plane. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do here. It's so screwed up. So I took a picture with my iPhone because remember, it's all right here. I sent it to my graphic design partner. Remember, we're not a billion dollar company. We do millions of dollars with a business, but we're not a billion dollar company. And I sent it to my graphic designer who's 25 and 22, but they're lean maniacs. They totally understand visual controls. And in 15 minutes, because they get lean, because they love lean, they sent back this. That's what lean does. Operational excellence. Think about what's going on there. Standardization, fonts the same size, sequentially laid out in the order that you need the information. It's pretty awesome. Now, why can't billion dollar airlines figure this out? The answer is really simple. They don't see waste. They don't understand waste. They don't understand the cumbersome processes that they're putting on their customer because they're not really customer oriented and they haven't taught their people what the eight wastes are. And we basically eliminated them all with this. Now Toyota came and visited us 
Yeah, you heard me right. Toyota came and visited us. And uh, they saw this and they said, we think it can be improved. And we didn't get defensive and say, hey, Toyota, you came to learn from us. Well, you may have taught us this whole thing, but you came to learn from us. I said, no, 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 what can we improve? And literally within 10 minutes of us telling the improvements, I sent the thing right back to graphic design and they sent it right back. And this is the improvements that Toyota suggested. These are the two second improvement. Let's put a little arrow on the line so it's clear what direction we're flying. Remove all ambiguity. Let's add the arrival time so the person picking you up, you don't have to search for that information. You don't have to extrapolate it. So the two hour flight, I gotta subtract that from there, then I'm gonna arrive there. No, it's right there, it's very simple, right? And we added the data at the top, brilliant. Small little improvement. This is what we're talking about. We didn't do a Kaizen event to do this. We took action immediately. This is the way we think at FastCap. We don't pause for anything. If there's a problem, there's a struggle, there's an opportunity, we go ahead and fix it. We do a little experimenting. 50% of everything we do fails. We're good with that. We have learned to fail so we don't fail to learn. We love to fail. We love to let our people fail. And this is the finished product right there without the arrows. Pretty cool. Now imagine our goal in lean improvements is right here. This is the criteria by which we evaluate whether or not we have a good improvement. Safety, quality, simplicity, and speed in that, in that order. So safety, we don't want to do anything that's going to impair safety. That would be a problem. That's a no-go. Even if it improves the quality and it's simpler and it's faster, but if it impairs quality, we don't do it. Now, then quality really is the next thing. It's the big reason we do lean. We don't do lean to make more money. If there's anybody in here that's doing lean to make more money, either leave or change your brain right now because it's not about money. It's about quality. And if you produce a high quality product and you're doing continuous improvement, you're gonna be driving down costs, improving quality for your customers. Your customers are gonna wrap their arms around you and the byproduct is money. It's not why you do it. You do it to give your customer better quality. Next, simplicity and speed. So just real quickly, let's look at that airline ticket. Let's evaluate that improvement. Is safety an issue? What do you think? Safety an issue? Is there any safety? Not, not really. I say maybe because I'm not gonna have a heart attack because I'm gonna miss my plane, right? So maybe you could extrapolate, it's, it's stretching it, right? Let's go, is it, is it better quality? Is the product better quality for the customer? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So we met the quality criteria. You see how simple this is? Lean is not complicated. If you wanna make it complicated, go knock yourself out, but you're gonna have a miserable life and you're not gonna get by it. This is how simple we make it. We teach our people to see the eight ways. We teach them this is the criteria for making an improvement. It removes all the bickering back and forth. This is Bob's idea. This is Mary's idea. This is Joe's idea. It doesn't matter whose idea it is. Does it meet the criteria? Is it a better quality product? It's a better quality product. Is it simpler? Way simpler, right? Is it faster? Way faster. So three of the criteria are met unequivocally. It's a great improvement. When Toyota asked me to put the arrow on there, did it improve the quality? Yes, right? Is it simpler? Yes. Is it faster? Yes, I don't even have to glance at that to make sure which direction we're going. You see what I'm saying? This, was this an improvement? Absolutely, it meets the criteria. It isn't a matter of that, well, Toyota, that's the way you want to do it. This is the way I did it. No, I, I looked at the criteria. I said, yes, they're right. When you keep it this simple, amazing things can happen. So let's take a look at a humorous improvement. Let's see whether or not it meets the criteria. So, what do you think, safety? Maybe not. Quality, what do you think? Maybe not, right? Maybe not.
I don't know, but maybe not. Simplicity? What do you think? Yeah, way simpler. What do you think about speed? Yeah, way faster. But it might have compromised quality and safety. So it's probably not the improvement we're going to go look at. You know, maybe, I don't know. I'm not there. i got to evaluate everything. But from a distance, there might be a quality and safety issue, right? Perhaps. So the ground rules for this talk are this. Lean is simple and lean is fun. It's the way I approach it. You know, I'm a simple guy. To illustrate that, Harvard did a study to find out why students learn. So they took $5 million of your tax dollars and mine and five years and a bunch of brainiacs at Harvard to tell us why students learn. Because it's important. We need to know why students learn. God, we need someone at Harvard to tell us why students learn. So they came back to us five years later after spending our money, and this is the conclusion. There are two reasons. First reason is they show up to class. So guess what? The people in this room fit the criteria. You're here. You're going to learn something about lean today. You showed up. The next thing, if you really want to do well, is you sit in the front row. So I've got my A students, my B students, my C, my D, and my F students in the back. OK, there you go. So simple. We make things so complicated. We check our brains. This stuff is all common sense. Lean is like Niagara Falls of common sense all day long. But we love to make it technical. We love bureaucracy, baby. Yeah, it empowers us. We're the keepers of the faith. We're the ones that know how to do everything. We're the smart ones. Nonsense. Nonsense. So to illustrate that, I like to show a men's toilet. When us men have a problem, we tend to make a mess in there. We're not very good. And so they've come up with all kinds of different toilet designs over the years, try to figure out how to solve the problems that we have. And this one particularly was quite interesting. They said 95% of the people said this new design was going to finally solve the spillage problems that we had. Right? But of course, there's a lean thinker in Denmark. He's a really smart guy. He said, oh, I'm going to use my common sense. I'm not going to do it the old-fashioned way. So he put a black fly in the toilet, and he gave a man a target, and lean is simple. Yeah. We love to make things complicated. We love, 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 love to use our wallets. Start using this thing. It's all right in front of you. Remember Austin's improvement? Hot glue, some wood. Open the case in about a half a second. Four latches. All these improvements are right underneath your nose. Problem is... We don't really understand lean. But when you teach the eight ways, and you keep it that simple, this is what happens. This is Mission Bell, large cabinet company in San Francisco. They do a lot of big projects for Google and everybody else. They got bitten by this thing, and they get it, and they're on lean fire because they know how to see waste. Here at Mission Bell, we've made a lean improvement to our application process. It used to be somebody would come into the front desk and they'd ask for an application. We'd give them this six-page paper copy. They'd fill it out, return it to the front desk, who would walk it up to Jessica, our recruiter, who would then walk over to the scanner, scan the file in so it could save to her computer, and then she'd file this paper file. Now if somebody comes to the front desk, we give them this card. It says, want to work for us? Please complete our online application at missionbell.com slash application.html so they can go home or use the public library to fill out the application and send it to us. When we receive the application online, Jessica doesn't have to scan it. Nobody has to walk around. It's all ready to go. This reduces over-processing of Jessica having to take the paper form to the scanner and scan it back to her computer. It reduces defects from possible misspellings or writing that we can't understand on the application because now it's just typed in and we can understand the typed words. Motion of the receptionist having to walk the application to Jessica and Jessica having to walk to the scanner and back. 
and inventory of the paper copies that used to go in a drawer. We fixed all that with just a little card. Imagine that. Isn't common sense beautiful? Think about what just happened right there. The starting video was what is two second lean? See waste, make small improvements, make before and after videos. You just saw it. Now imagine what that company looks like after a year of doing lean, linking together all these improvements. They went from six pages to a single card, remove defects, over processing, motion, all kinds. Now they, they're just doing this nonstop. They have 250 employees. They're just linking these things together nonstop because everybody's making these improvements. What do you think it's like working at Mission Bell after a year? Amazing! They didn't wait to have a Kaizen event. They just taught people how to see waste and use their brain and start improving processes. And they take, they're not making little improvements. I mean, you think about it, they are making little improvements, but that improvement's gigantic when you think about the amount of waste. The overprocessing that's going on in our organizations is staggering. So at our company, you know, we make just the cheesiest videos. We don't even care if they're, they're not perfect. And this is a great example of a non-perfect video, but it shows the power of showing people how to see waste and make small improvements. So this is Lucas, our production supervisor, with a great improvement. I want to show you an amazing two-second improvement. This is the product we make, the Magnetic 11 Finger. It's a push stick with sticks right on your table saw. And Lucas came up with an incredible way to make that more efficient in the way we install the magnets here. All right, so we're at 11 Fingers here. This is an 11 Finger. It's a new product from FastCap. And it needs two magnets pressed into it here after it comes out of the injection molding machine. So when we first started building these, uh, we had to come up with a way to do it. So I'll show you the method and how long it takes here. Start that, you take your magnet, you push it in with your finger there. You push another magnet in with your finger there. You'd have to push these down on the tabletop and then you'd have to hold it up and make sure you could not see the magnet sticking out and press again if it didn't work. So building one that way took 14 seconds approximately and it caused your fingers a ton of pain. We had some problems with that still in shipping. People had issues with the magnets coming out when they got knocked against things even though they're actually attracted to each other and they go back in quite easily. We were having issues. So we came up with a way to make it less painful on your fingers and faster. And so we'll show you that next year. An improvement, we made a couple jigs here to make this process less painful, faster, and higher quality. First one is a 3D printed little piece that goes on your thumb here. Works a lot like a Pez dispenser. So with this and this jig we built, you would put your thumb dispenser on and wear it the whole time. And you would use it, slide it up the stack, and you would use it to push it into the 11th finger, just like that. And that saved your fingers pain. When you're done with that though, they're sticking out quite a ways. So we'd put it in this jig and we'd press the magnets in with the jig. You wouldn't have to check it because the press gets them in there tighter and that eliminated a lot of problems with the magnets coming out. They don't come out very easily with that. However, the thing on your thumb made it hard to put a sticker on this once you were wearing it and slowed you down packaging the finger. But that also took 15 seconds, so it really wasn't any faster. But, so in the spirit of constant improvement, we thought we could make this even better. And so here's what we came up with that we think is the ultimate solution. This is the awesome jig we came up with. It works on a hopper system. So to load it up, you just drop your stacks of magnets in your hopper here. And now to build them, all you gotta do is press the magnets in. So we'll time it this way and start. And stop. And that was three seconds. So to do these fast, I can just So with that, we have improved the quality. The magnets get pressed in better. I challenge you to get these magnets out of here once we've pressed them in. And we can build five in the 15 seconds it took to build one before. Yeah! Just a little 500% improvement. But that happens all day long at our place. It's just common pick, it's just common fare because we allow our people to experiment. You saw him experimenting there and you saw him failing with the little Pez dispenser thing. He, he spent the time to print that on a stereolithography machine. We designed it. We don't care. Our people are learners. They're constantly learning all the time and they deliver so many improvements. Our sales just keep going up. Our, our labor number keeps going down. It's insane. It's insane what is going on in our company. It just keeps happening because everybody's doing it. It's not resigned to a few lean experts. Everybody's doing it. Now, we carry it, uh, you know, we're a little crazy, 
And we uh, like to do things that are kind of somewhat ridiculous and maybe a little frivolous. So this is a great little frivolous improvement. But it really illustrates how much fun we have with Lean and how much Lean is part of who we are. Hey, Paul here. So, you know, people come on a tour here and one of the things we love to show them is our kitchen table, how we leave everything perfectly clean all the time. And we have our salt and pepper marked out. We have our Windex marked out. We have our paper towels marked out. And people have been watching the videos we've been posting about the tours and this one guy looks at it and says, Paul, you know, that's really cool, but why don't you use magnets? Then you don't have to worry about kind of realigning the salt and pepper and getting it right over the thing. And I go, no, that's a great idea. And we're like the magnet kings. We make all kinds of different magnets. So Andre and I undertook this project to put magnets under the Windex, the paper towels, and the salt and pepper shaker. So this is what it looks like. Check this out. You take the salt, boom, it just goes right on there. But the best thing is, you go over and you try to put the salt on the pepper and it doesn't go on there because of reverse the polarity. You put them on there, look at that. They both just go on perfectly. The same thing with this. That is so cool. Is that incredible? I know, look at this, check this one out. Look at that, it just goes into place. Look at this. Some, one of our people that came on a tour, somebody watched a tour, is that amazing? That just makes lunch so much more enjoyable. I know, it's fun, isn't it? It looks like, you're gonna, it looks like you're gonna cry. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? We take our improvements very seriously here at Fast Cap. It's a big deal to us. So if you want to give us an idea on how we can improve, we would love to know about it. Right, Elena? Wow. Oh, you'll get over it. It's okay. It's just an improvement. We love Lean. We just love everything about it. We have a ball with it. We let our people experiment and be creative. And it's just, it's just the coolest thing. It's the greatest innovation model you'll ever have. And gosh, I get so excited about it. But Unfortunately, it's just, just not the way it is in, in most organizations. Most organizations look like this, to be honest with you. You know, you come to work and, you, and you're struggling, man. Everything's a, everything's a chore. And, you know, you got to do the simplest thing and you got to get 10 people involved. It feels like you're jumping in a mud pool to get it done. I mean, it's just crazy. There's just struggle everywhere. But the minute you struggle is the minute there's an opportunity for you to improve. So if you're struggling with something, you need to stop and fix it. If you're struggling with something, I guarantee it's riddled with waste. And this is the way we teach it. We say fix what bugs you. If it's driving you crazy, fix it. And you know, people say, oh, it's not that bad. It is that bad. I can walk in any organization here, I guarantee you, I'll see it so fast, it'll make your head spin. So I just got back from Kazakhstan and I was in a, a $1.8 billion company that have concrete plants all over the place. You know, they're building 2 million square feet a year. They're just incredible. And they asked me to come out there and take a look and see if I could find waste. Boy, baby, did I see waste. They thought I'd find just a little bit of waste. And everywhere I went, it was just like crazy. I, I said to the president of the company, I said, dude, if you're okay with building all your buildings twice, then you just keep on doing what you're doing. But everything you're doing, you're taking twice as long to do it and spending twice as much money. Now, I was being gentle on him because the truth of the matter is it was four times as long. That's how bad it was. So here's a video of just how bad it was. So I walked into their concrete plant and I go, why is all that concrete on the ground? Oh, well, that's because the ground's unlevel. I said, well, why is the ground unlevel? He said, well, you know, it gets unlevel and, you know, the truck spills sometimes. Well, well, why don't you make the ground level? Why don't you pour concrete so they're not unlevel? He goes, well, we don't have we don't, it's too expensive. Meanwhile, they're dumping it all over the ground, right? I'm going, you gotta be kidding. So, you know, they brought a $200,000 front end loader up to fix the problem because they didn't really want to fix the problem, so they just over-processed the problem. And so I made the president of the company get out there with me and shovel it in so he could feel the stupid work that he was making his people do. How much stupid work are you making your people do? I guarantee it, it's everywhere in your organization. There are bad processes everywhere, just like this. This is a very sophisticated company, and this is the kind of stuff they were doing, and it was everywhere. Are you making your people do stupid work? Have you even been on the shop floor to feel the pain you're putting your people through? I recommend every CEO get on the shop floor and feel what your people are going through. Work on the shop floor. So I made them go out and do that. It turns out they had a whole swamp of concrete they were dumping stuff in. This was regular practice. So I made a video just to show them how ridiculous some of the stuff is that they were doing. Now this is not resigned to companies in Kazakhstan, believe me. 
It's going on all over the world. It doesn't matter where I go, I see this stuff. Because I can see waste. I've trained my brain to see it. I know the difference between value and non-value added activity. I was recently at Denver Airport and this is what happened. Fox Rental Cars at Denver International, where customer service is not a department. I've been waiting 20 minutes to get my car and I still have not got it. I have no idea what's going on here. They called the police on me. They did. 20 minutes, I didn't get my car and they called the police on me. I left and went to Enterprise. I got the car in like four minutes. Stupid Paul, I should have focused on quality. I focused on price and this is what happened. I see this everywhere I go. It turns out there's a rule of 0.001%, so a tenth of 1%, that if you make one tiny improvement every day, not a two second improvement, but the tiniest little improvement, if everybody in this room just makes one improvement, that their productivity will double in three years. It's statistical fact. It's pretty cool. So what I'm talking about is not some pie in the sky thing. This is actually a statistical fact. I learned this in Japan the last time I went there about six months ago. We had a statistician come in and he explained the power of making small little improvements. But this waste is everywhere and unfortunately it's not just little improvements, there are massive improvements that are gonna yield way more than doubling your productivity in three years. I mean, you'll double your productivity if you do this right like every three months. So this is getting a cup of coffee at McDonald's. So here is my scene waste for the day. I just got my Newman's coffee for a buck at McDonald's. I love the value of McDonald's. But I asked for three creams and two Splendas in the coffee, and they said, no problem, we'll put it in. But she handed me this bag. And I go, wow, that bag's heavy. And she put five creamers, four Splendas, and four sugars. I think that's a little bit of overproduction and a whole lot of waste. Now, this is a world-class company, McDonald's. I mean, they, they're buttoned down, man. They know what's going on. But they're not listening to the customer because I was very, 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 very specific when I went through that drive through I want two creams and two Splendas in the coffee, I said. I don't want to put it in. I want you to put it in. I said, no problem, we'll do that. And look what I got. Look how much waste is there. Now, McDonald's is a big organization. They're all over the world. Could you imagine that happening all day long all over the world? Do you, do you have any idea what kind of money we're talking about, how much waste we're talking about. Think about all the resources, the energy, just to make all that stuff. It's all going in the dump. And then we're gonna manage it for another 40 years for the methane gas. So you got all the transportation, all the energy to make it, then transport it, then put it in inventory, then put it in my bag, then put it in the trash, then take the trash truck to the dump, and then manage it with a D8 and a D9 for the next 40 years. Just because someone is not listening, they don't understand value and non-value. They don't understand how to see waste. Could you imagine what this world would look like if people could just see waste? Could you imagine the available resources? It is staggering. Staggering. That's why I'm so passionate about it. This is operational excellence at McDonald's the next day in Las Vegas. Same process. Two shots of Splenda. Goes into the creamer, cream pours, at the same time she grabs a coffee, puts it in. Eight seconds, my coffee's perfect. No waste. Same company. Standard work. Obviously, they didn't train their people right in Rhode Island. And the people were trained correctly in Las Vegas. A great process delivers fabulous results. A bad process is a nightmare. But people don't know how to see waste. And that is the essence of this talk. So I'm gonna illustrate it by you counting how many times the people in the white shirt pass the basketball. But pay close attention, because they move a little quickly. So how many times are the people in the white shirt passing the basketball? Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball.
How many passages? How many times? You count. Fifteen? Okay, good. The correct answer. All right, answer good. You got it. Fifteen got it. Pay passages. Pay attention, good. But did you see the gorilla? Most people don't see it. If you saw it, great. Most people don't see it. Because we are blind. We haven't been trained to see it, but when you start seeing it, it's going to be amazing. So where are we going? I'm going to tell you about my lean journey, how I got started in lean, learning to see waste. We've started that process already because it's everywhere. So who am I? I'm not a consultant. I'm not a public speaker, although I consult with companies and I speak all over the world. But I am a manufacturer. I love to get my hands dirty. I love to make things. That's really what my passion is in life. But above all else, I'm a lean fanatic 24-7. I see this everywhere. I, I just love lean. I do lean at home. I do lean at work. I just love lean because it produces so much joy. And the people that get it, their lives are so much more fulfilling than the people that don't. So 15 years ago, I learned about lean in 2000. And what happened was we were founded in 97, as Sherry said, and we were a really you know, cool company, young, hip company. Everyone wanted to work for us, making great money. The bank said they'd give us any amount of money we wanted. I didn't have an MBA from Harvard. I just had a degree in education. And they said, you know, we'll give you a quarter million dollar line of credit, which was very unusual to give a young startup company that much money. But they said, you know, I've never seen a company so well run and so well organized. We developed the fast cap appeal and stick cover cap. Then six months later, developed the laser jam, a laser leveling device. You know, now we have 900 products. It was a, been a crazy ride. And of course, when you walked into our factory, everything was just like buttoned down. The floors were painted. Everything was super hyper organized. I mean, it just was a cool place. It was easy to work there. It looked good. It was great. And it should have because I learned from the master. I learned from Bob Taylor. He was my mentor at 17 years old. I built the first 2,000 guitars that came out of Taylor Guitars between uh, 1977 and 79. I got to watch Bob and I built all the furniture in my house and I built all my musical instruments and I restored all these beautiful homes in Pasadena. I was an industrial arts teacher. I knew production. I knew what I was doing. I mean, I was not a greenhorn. So it's, it's normal for the bank to walk into my new startup company and say, wow, I've never seen anything like this. You guys are really good. It made sense to me. You know, I, I built my home, I built, did all the gardening, I built all the landscape, I built all the furniture in the house, the guitars in the house. It has 150 Pella windows in it. It's a spectacular home. I knew production. I built million dollar homes for people all over the place. So I knew what I was doing and I was extremely well organized. And this is probably one of the most important points in this talk right here. So I was very well organized. I had everything buttoned down, faced off, dusted. It looked so cool. Our factory was, wow, it was great. Man, right? But unfortunately, lean is not about being organized. Did you hear what I just said? Lean is not about being organized because you can organize waste, and I was the master of it. Okay? I was the master of it. So if all you people that are sitting here right now and are OCD, and you think because you're OCD, you're lean, newsflash, you ain't got a clue. It has nothing to do with being OCD because I am the master of it. And I was the worst offender. Now, being highly organized is a result of being lean. But being organized is not lean. Because you can organize waste. And I mastered it. So I had these people come in to look at my factory floor to kind of see if they could help me manage the inventory. And what they told me was a little disconcerting. They said, I'm clueless. They said, you don't know what you're doing. And now from someone who just got all this accolade, winning business awards, making millions of dollars and doing everything else that we were doing, to have somebody tell me I was clueless, that was a little disconcerting. So I said, what do I need to do? And they said, you need to learn TPS or you need to learn lean manufacturing or Kaizen. And that was a problem because I didn't know what that was. It sounded like Greek to me. I'm a Greek. And I mean, I didn't understand. I was like, what the heck are they talking about, right? So I said, how do I learn this stuff? And they say, well, you know, we can teach you how, but first you need to understand this is a world-class principle practiced by Toyota, who basically developed it, and Harley Davidson, who was transformed in 1980 by it, and Porsche, who was transformed in 2000 by it, and the Israeli Defense Forces, who is probably arguably one of the most uh, effective fighting forces in the world. No wonder they kick everyone's butt. They're lean maniacs. 
Amazon, next time you type into Amazon, click, 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 and you like the way it's all organized and it works, and you click, click, click to return, thank Lean. Maniacs. They've been to our facility four times now. Thank Lean. Virginia Mason Hospital. See, it turns out some of the best organizations in the world, period, are Lean companies, because Lean works. But my favorite company of all is Southwest Airlines. I don't think anyone compares to them because they're in the worst industry you could ever be and they could make up all the excuses why they couldn't make money. But it turns out this little airline is turning planes sometimes in 22 minutes, oftentimes 30 minutes. If you watch other airlines, it takes them an hour to get a plane in and out, it's crazy. Uh, they fly one plane, they standardize everything with one simple plane, but of course all the other airlines said, you can't do that, you gotta have all these different planes to, to service everyone. Southwest said, that's nonsense. They've always been profitable. They never lost money. They have total personal freedom with their people. They're projected to make $1 billion in profit. They're the highest paid airline in the world when you work for them. And uh, they, they move 11 million passengers a month more than any other airline in the world. They're not even the biggest airline. Wow, that sounds like a pretty lean thing. And they have fun. If you ever fly on Southwest Airlines, they're not perfect. Nobody's perfect that does lean, but they're unbelievable compared to everyone else. They're, they're an amazing airline. But of course, this is what most airlines subject themselves to and their people. They have all these different planes, and I'm a pilot, I fly a complex airplane, and you know, to train a pilot in all these different planes and have training programs and manuals and maintenance departments and avionics specialists, this is a nightmare. No wonder these people don't make money, right? No wonder they have all the problems they have. But Southwest said, no, we're just gonna fly one airline, one, one plane, and we're going to work with Boeing and we're going to develop the best airline ever, the best air, airplane ever developed, the 737. And, uh, you know, Boeing worked directly with them and perfected this plane and they standardized it. And the rest is history. The power of standardization. Lean works, man. Lean works. It works from A to Z, from soup to nuts. It's just an amazing thing. So I hired these young kids to come in, Brad and John. They came into my facility, and I thought they were just gonna like tweak my company that was already rock and roll good, but they totally tore everything up. They said, Paul, you are so clueless, man. You don't, I don't care who trained you. You don't have a clue what you're doing. They were nice to me, but basically that's what they told me. And uh, they turned everything into U-shaped cells, and we started making everything just in time. So we took our fast cap product that was taking us 45 minutes to do a setup, and they asked us why we were overproducing. Remember the shelves with all the inventory on it, everything packaged, all the finished goods ready to go? They said, why are you doing that? I said, well, the setup time's 45 minutes. And they said, well, let's work on the setup time. So they took the setup time from 45 minutes to five minutes. Now we do it in about three minutes, two and a half minutes. So just a little bit of savings, just, just a little bit, you know, not, not a lot, just a little bit. And then we were the laser jam, we were, we were building 100 at a time in big batch works and moving them all around the shop and carts and, you know, we'd get to the end of building 100 of them, we'd find out the sticker was put on wrong, so guess what, we had 100 defects, then we had to over-process it, then we had to uh, uh, display more emotion, then the customer was waiting, see how those wastes come in all of a sudden? And so they said, well, why do you make it 100 at a time? Well, I, I, it just seems like the most efficient way to do it. I mean, isn't batch work, isn't that a good way to do that, it's more efficient, you lay them all out, you put 100 stickers on, put 100 inserts in, file 100 of them, do all that stuff. I said, no, 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 you're gonna make one at a time. I laughed at him, I said, no way, it's impossible. So in one week they took our process, tore the whole thing apart, turned it into a small little cell right here, this is the laser jam cell, and we started making one at a time in seven minutes. So from 45 minutes to seven minutes in one week, got rid of all the inventory, customer called up, I want a laser jam, boom, seven minutes later one came out. Magic. It's a magic show. I don't know what to say, it's a magic show. I got on plane, went to Japan immediately, started seeing things that I'd never seen in America before. I saw stand-up desks, people on pipe desks, and it kind of looks like fast cap now, doesn't it? It looks familiar. And I went to factories that were, uh, you know, potentially the dirtiest factories you could ever go in, these metal stamping and everything. And they're the cleanest factories I've ever been in. And they painted all the walls, it looked like Disneyland, with skylights coming in, and the environment was great, and the people were happy, I was going, Wow, you know, I'm on, I'm on Earth, but uh, these lean people in Japan, they're like on Mars. I'm not even in the same planet. I'm so far off the mark, right? So I said, okay, this is crazy. I, I, I've, I've got to do this. This is nuts. I went to Kishu, Japan. This is a Lexus plant. They painted all the smokestacks yellow so they could see the pollution. The neighbors could see the pollution. The employees could see the pollution. If there was anything putting out, it was very obvious. Great visual controls. Kind of reminds me of that airline ticket. This is Toto up here. They make uh, brass fittings, fixtures, and toilets, and it's so clean you could eat off the floor. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's just crazy what happens 
when you really get the lean thing. Everything's flexible. I noticed everything was on wheels. Even the soda machines were on wheels. That was kind of crazy. And then this is the president of Toyota. He's got a badge on zero, zero mistakes, zero defects, zero machine downtime, zero safety issues. Not, you know, one every thousand, one every 10,000, zero. The standard was so much different than anything I'd ever heard before. Just-in-time culture, and this particular metal fabricating plant, they had everything color-coded. The steel was purple, the uh, aluminum was blue. They stocked only enough material to last them about a day. They started having all the deliveries happen every day. I said, it didn't make any sense. They said, actually, it does, because when you think about how much room we had to have to have all the inventory and the cost of managing all the inventory, the cost of counting all the inventory, the cost of the, the air conditioning, the lighting, and everything to expand our footprint to manage all this inventory, it actually was cheaper to have it delivered every day. And it didn't make sense, you know, at face value. But I started to understand the way the Japanese thought about things, particularly the lean Japanese companies. And I go, wow, this is crazy. And I went to a company called Hawks, and these guys really turned me upside down. That's the president down there at the bottom. And the first thing he did when I got in there was he got me down on my hands and knees and made me scrub his floor with him side by side with his people. So the first thing they did every morning when they got to work was they 3S, not 5S. They got rid of the 2Ss. They lean that out because the last two S's are sustained and self-disciplined, but they do it every day. So it's automatic. It's part of their kata. It's part of their routine. Why add? Why complicate? Why over-process? They just subtract the two out. They sweep, sort, and they standardize every day. That's what they do. And so he taught me this process. I was a little pissed when he got me down on my hands and knees. I said, we got floor cleaners to do that. Why are we doing that? But unfortunately, the lesson was humility. And I wasn't really ready to learn that, but I finally did. And uh, I was kind of blown away by the whole experience. I go, wow, I am so far off the mark. It is unbelievable. So they turned out, they cleaned all this stuff out of their, their plant by this 3Sing process, and they standardized everything, and they went from losing millions to making millions in the course of one year through the 3Sing process. Now, not the Kaizen event process, the 3Sing process. Now, I know uh, Sherry has done a fantastic job with her team. It's just been remarkable. And a lot of their efforts have centered around 3Sing for the past four months. And uh, you know the number of trailers of things they took away has been staggering. But their plant is remarkable. I mean, it's like, wow, it's really one of the best transformations I've ever seen in four months. I've never seen anything like what happened at Vantech and what I saw yesterday. But you know, pretty much it was a lot of 3Sing. Power of 3Sing. But a lot of you think, uh, you know, it's not that powerful. But if I went in and looked at your drawers and your office and your desk, this is probably what it looks like. I know because I walk around a lot of offices all over the world and I see this. I see computers that are cluttered up with junk. I see drawers that are just catch-alls. Uh, you know, 3Sing applies to everything. It doesn't apply just to the manufacturing world. It applies to the digital world. You know, I'm constantly 3Sing my phone, my computer. I'm constantly sweeping, sorting, and standardizing everything. I'm relentless about this. This is not like something just for the factory floor. This is for me and everything I do, every second, the way I think. This is my office. It's on the factory floor. I have no office. There is no Title says King Paul, knock if you want an appointment. You know, I'm right on the shop floor I'm with everybody else. Everybody else walks up to me all day long. I'm always walking around the shop floor. You open my drawer, it's nice 3S, everything in Kaizen foam. You look at my computer screen, it's not all cluttered with junk because I practice 3Sing everywhere, every day, all the time. We all do. It's part of what we do. We keep lean so simple. We see waste, we 3S everything, we make small improvements, and then we work. And then we work. If you get that, the rest is history. So everywhere I went in Japan, I saw just clear standards. I saw things just so simple and easy to understand. And when I asked the president of the company, I mean, well, what do people think when they come to your plant, like from Nissan and Ford? Because everybody was coming to see Hawks. And they said, oh, Paul, it's very simple. You know, I've got a PhD, master's degree. We've got all these people with all these smart credentials and everything, but smart people just can't believe it could be this simple. They got to complicate things. They just got to complicate it. And I said, okay, I get it. I'm going to go home. I'm going to see waste. I'm going to learn to see waste. I'm going to start 3Sing everything every day. I'm going to meet with my team every day. 
and I think everything else will take care of itself. And that's exactly what I did. So I went from struggling with implementing Lean for the first five years of my Lean journey to setting the world on fire because I built a culture and I started teaching and training my people and teaching them how to see waste, how to do 3Sing, how to make small incremental improvements every day, connect them all together and transform the world. It was it. So driving down the road in Japan, I said, I get it. What is Lean? Lean is learning to see waste, okay? Eliminating waste by fixing what bugs you. I know that there are things that you do every day that are driving you crazy, and you just keep tolerating them day after day after day. Understand the waste element within those processes. Start fixing them, make small little videos before and after, share them with your culture, be vulnerable, show them how silly the stupid things are that you're doing, and people will start saying, this is cool, I can do this. Learn the eight ways, overproduction. It all starts when you make too much. When you make too much of something, then you have to transport it. This is a fast food style of the eight deadly ways. We did this to be fun. So you make too many hamburgers, then you have to transport them. Then you put them in inventory in a warming oven. You have to build a bigger footprint. You have to have warming lights now. Instead of making the hamburger just when they need it and hand it to them, now we've got to make a big warming area, right? So we can manage all that inventory. Then the next thing you know, the customer walks up and says, I want it without pickles. Now we have a defect. Now we have to overprocess it. We have to waste motion, the customer's waiting, and we've wasted our employee potential because we're making them do stupid work because we don't know how to produce just in time. There you go. That's where waste comes from. So think about the examples that I've given you so far with the filling out the application. Think of all the waste that was involved in that. But as soon as you start to see it, everything changes. I came home from Japan, I made this video. This is the first video I made. Very cheesy video but I didn't care. I just wanted to convey what I was seeing now for the first time in my life that I never saw before. In an attempt to always find waste, this is my burrito that I'm eating. Now they asked me when I bought it if I wanted sour cream and hot sauce, and I said yes. So instead of putting it in the burrito, they gave it to me in a separate container. I have an idea. Next time, put the sour cream and the hot sauce in the burrito. Okay, I just finished my burrito and this is all the waste. We have the aluminum foil that's going to be thrown out, the paper that's going to be thrown out, the container from the salsa and the sour cream. We have two napkins, one I didn't use, and a whole little box here with a plastic fork and a plastic knife, all going to be put in the landfill for one burrito. All I really needed was the aluminum foil to wrap it in and that was it sour cream, everything could have been inside in one napkin. I would have made less of a mess and I would have been perfect. Look at all the waste. Check out this waste. We did a spreadsheet. Four cents for the carton. The knife and fork, six cents. Everything added up to 31 cents of waste per burrito. 30 burritos a day, $9.30 times seven days a week, 52 weeks. $3,385 per store. If you take 31 cents a burrito times 10 million burritos a day in the U.S. alone, that's $3.1 million in the landfill. That's total waste. Okay, I'm back at the local coffee shop, curb shops, and we're gonna get ourselves a lean burrito. Watch how this is done. Hi, Gina, how are you? Good, how are you? Can I get a lean burrito? Sure. I want a burrito with sour cream, hot sauce inside, Aluminum foil and nothing else in one napkin. Sounds good. Okay, okay, thanks, Gina. Here it comes, the lean burrito. What do we got? Aluminum foil, one napkin. Wow, that's amazing. Look at all the waste we eliminated with the sour cream and everything inside. Isn't this yummy? Look at this thing. All ready to go, just the way I wanted it, just what the customer wanted, and no more and no less. Staggering. It's crazy. Everywhere you go, it's everywhere. So at this conference, it's happening right now, right in front of you. The other day I was at the, uh, in Maryland speaking at a conference and when the guy introduced me, Jeff Fuchs here, he's a top lean leader, he knows lean really well, but he gave me really the best introduction I've ever had because he basically told the story of what happened to him when he saw the lean burrito because here he's a lean guy and he didn't see waste. And now for the first time in his life, boom, the eyes were calibrated. And this is the way he introduced me, it's fabulous. Hi, my name is Jeff Fuchs, and I just wanted to describe a little bit about what happened after I watched the Lean Burrito video. 
So I'm walking into my favorite place, Starbucks, and I order a drink, and it suddenly dawns on me that there's a lot of waste going on here. I'm getting a paper cup, a paper sleeve, the plastic top, and then I have to tell people what my order is, and they put my name down on the cup. They're wasting a lot of time. They're writing down all my specifics, and it could be a lot less confusing for everybody. So I went in, I bought one of their steel cups, I broke out my label maker, and I put all my information right on it. There's my name, there's all my specifics, 4SL in their code. It's simple, it's hassle-free, it's better for them, it's better for me. And these days, I walk into Starbucks and I'm a rock star. Everything's a process. Everything you do is a process. How you get your coffee is a process. How you brush your teeth is a process. How you make your lunch is a process. How you answer your emails is a process. Everything you do is a process. If you start understanding that all we're doing with Lean is from the moment you start a process to the time you finish a process, there's all these activities that are happening. And all we're trying to do is extract the waste, the non-value added activity out of it and take the process from here to here. That's all we're doing. And everything is a process. There is nothing that you do in life that's not a process. How I set up to do this this morning was a process. Everything is a process. And when you start to realize that, you realize that even getting your signature, getting my signature on my book is a process because that's what happens to you when you start to see waste. This is Gay Lynn, and she is so smart and such a great lane thinker. She came up to get her signature for my signature. Look what she did. She even made the process to remove all variation, gave me her name, how to spell it, and told me where to sign it. You rock. <laughs> it's amazing. Everything's a process. How you get your car keys is a process. This is Walters and Wolf in Las Vegas. Hello again, it's Joelle in Las Vegas. Today's segment is basically key drama. We have various keys for vehicles, doors, etc. They're kept in this little tiny box. And every morning the guys need to move various vehicles out of the yard so that looks that we like can fun. access the yard and the warehouse area. Um, yes, they're labeled but as you can see, in no order whatsoever. Here's a nice little list that tells the user which vehicle is which number to which key, and that just has been totally unsuccessful. So stay tuned as we fix what bugs us today. Thank you. Sorted. So what I decided to do was create more of a visual control for each vehicle and the keys associated with that vehicle. I took a picture of each vehicle, I identified which vehicle it was, the ID number, who drives it, and where it is to be stored. I'm hoping that this ends our key. Now, does that drama. make you want to go get Thanks the keys to the car? I mean, that's day. like magic, isn't it? Imagine the way it was and the way it is now. Everything's a process. So I taught Walters and Wolf this simple concept. 1,800 union employees two years ago, they've made 3,000 improvement videos. When Google comes to interview them to do their work, they want to know about their lean efforts, not how good they put up glass all over high rises all over the Western United States. They want to know about their lean efforts. In two years, everybody wants to visit Walters and Wolf to learn lean. Two years. Taught them to see waste, taught them to fix what bugs them, taught them to make before and after videos. So the president of that company, Nick Cosell, is a very, very close friend of mine. And he is an amazing human being because he has enormous amounts of responsibility on him and he's very humble very humble and very funny. So, he likes to poke fun at himself, so he made a little video to show what their meetings look like. You ready? There is waste in everything. Everything is a process, especially your meetings. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Dad. How are you today? Yeah, how's your weekend? It's my good oh, friend Nick right here. So where is everybody? I thought this meeting started at 9 o'clock. Yeah, so my meeting requested at 9 o'clock. Hey, good morning, guys. So where's, um, where's everybody? Where's Billy Bob and Peggy Sue? Uh, I don't know. The meeting started at 9.
Is this respect for people right now? One of the pillars of lean? Respect for people? Is this respect for people? How often does this happen in your organization? Identifying waste? Okay. Hello. Hey, what you doing? Huh. Yeah, babe. Um, I'm just getting ready to walk into a meeting. Huh? Well, no, I'm in a meeting, but it's okay. Uh, Personal. Can I call you in like 10 minutes? This guy. Can I ask you guys to plug your. Or is it wireless? Yeah. Oh, well, I know how. Start pulling cords out of here. There's something like here. Oh, I got it. You need the blue wire. The blue one. Where's the blue wire? There's the red one. But no blue. Let me ask you a phone. Yeah. I'll get it. Okay. I put the stuff on the computer, so I just gotta. Is there. Can I get one on my iPod? We had Siri. Siri, can we hook up iPad to our computer in our conference room? Oh, Lord. 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 Oh, Lord.
So they understood the power of standardization, they understood the power of respecting other people and not wasting their time, and they apply lean to everything, not just in the manufacturing of windows for high rises, but the way they run their meetings, the way they do everything. It's, it's an amazing place to see somebody get it so deeply, simply by seeing waste, fixing what bugs them, applying standardization to everything they do. One of my greatest examples, though, of showing lean in action is lean beer. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but it's incredible. The best place to see Josh Springer's invention is at a ball game, but away from the action. How simple is the technology? It is, it's very simple. It's very, very simple. To fully appreciate it, you need to have two traits. One, you hate standing in line. Two, you have an affinity for beer. I've got Bud Regular, um, i got Michelob Ultra. I, I don't, I'm the kind of guy that won't wait in a beer line. I go to the event, I pay good money for the seats. So just to prove to himself it could be done. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. He set out to end the beer line forever with a dispenser that pours the beer from the bottom up. The speed is something to behold. Springer says he holds an unofficial world record for pouring 56 beers in one minute. His videos on YouTube have gone viral. Why do you think people get so excited seeing a beer uh, filled up from the bottom? That's a great question, but I still kind of giggle when I see it happen too. It just kind of it captivates you. So how do you fill a beer up from the bottom? Well, as you may have suspected, there's a hole in the bottom of the cup. But the key to making all this work is with this, a simple magnet. So when you put, put the cup on here, the magnet is suspended, and then the liquid comes in, and then you just... Right, the liquid comes in from, from around the holes or underneath the magnet. Once the beer is filled, just grab the cup, and the magnet forms a perfect seal with a tin ring embedded in the cup. What do people do with the magnets when they're done with them? They take them home and put them on their fridge. Which leads to Springer's second great idea, get advertisers to put their logos on the magnet. Amazing. Now, what did Josh do? I want you to think about that. What did Josh do? First of all, he saw waste, the waste of staying in the line. He went to the basketball game to watch world-class athletes put the ball in the hoop. Waiting in a beer line is waste. So he said, hey, I see the waste, and he fixed what bugged him. That's all he did, and he came up with a world-class invention and a great innovative idea. It's that simple. Our deliberate practice every day is to 3S everything, make one improvement, meet as a team, and then we work. If you get that down, everything else seems to take care of itself magically. Will you do more advanced forms of lean? As absolutely you will. But until you understand this discipline, and understand until you become perfect at doing this, you're really not ready to advance onto the next level. And the beautiful thing about lean, the way we teach it, is this is the antidote to entropy. Entropy is happening whether you like it or not. Everything is going from a state of order to disorder. That's just the way it is. Open your glove box in your car, look at your garage door, look at your coat closet. It's a disaster. I know it is. There are a few of you that might not have that, but for the most people, that's the way it is. So our organizations are growing in complexity and, and things are just, deteriorating. But if you're doing lean all the time, if you do lean first, it's the very antidote to the very problem that nature throws at us. And that is that things are deteriorating. It's a beautiful thing when you build this culture. Now this is uh, Xylem Design, another company that's been doing lean for about two years now. And what they have done is again, nothing short of breathtaking. Look at the cultural change in these people as they describe what's happened as they do these simple disciplines every day. Yeah, I would definitely have to say culture. I mean, it's all about culture. Uh, one of the first things, you know, trying to get people immersed in the lean program um, once we made it a great learning environment where people felt safe and comfortable and not afraid to make mistakes, ask for help, and once, once the culture was there, it was really easy for, for me to get immersed in it, and I believe for other new people coming in the door to jump right on in. So oh. meetings are absolutely critical. I mean, everything tends to Devo, or you know, we we tend to. Uh, What's Devo? Uh, Devolve. Okay. And uh, um, you know, if we don't keep up on stuff like that, they get it gets dropped, and eventually we start losing some of those 
some of those things that make us a strong company. Improvements and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, what there's like? visual, there's, you know, visual indicators absolutely everywhere, which saves an immense amount of time. I know when uh, I first started working here, I was constantly looking and at, you know, looking for somebody to help me, asking where I could find something, not knowing the right, right person to ask. Now we have everything labeled, you know, exactly who can do what, you know, exactly what to tools go where and color coded and everything, everything is a lot more efficient. No cool. time wa wandering around. Good. Everybody has to continuously improve. Everybody does improvement every day. Right. Um, it makes our lives easier, which makes us run better. How have you been here for how long? Two and a half years. Okay, so what have you seen in that period of time in terms of our evolution? Struggles? It's, it's accomplishments. Way less struggles. Um, everything that, uh, every process we do is easier than it used to be. Not only just the entire vir environment, just looking around, it's a completely different place. Okay. So, well, what would you tell it. someone coming into this business, trying to do it at their place? Stick with it. Keep doing it. You're going to get beaten over the head and keep doing it. Is there a magic bullet or not? No. Persistence. A lot of 22 calibers, not one big shotgun shell? Pretty much. Persistence. Got it. What are you seeing that works for, for this company and makes us different? A color-coded schedule. A color-coded schedule. So that tool was a groundbreaker for you, yeah, a game, cha game well, changer? When I first started working here, it just seemed like everyone kind of came in and there was a, everyone knew what they needed to do, but there was a very lack, a big lack of understanding as to how, how much time, how, how your day was supposed to be spent. Okay. We came up with a schedule and has colors and it's just really stupid simple. You see a color, you know what area, you know you have who you have to report to, you know what you're doing. Simple and visual. Yeah, yes. and that goes hand in hand with the training matrix as well. Cool. Tell me about our culture. Do you think uh, we'd be where we were without the daily meetings or our values printed on the wall? Absolutely not. Okay. Wouldn't last, wouldn't last too long? I don't long? think it wouldn't last very long at all. Cool. Not with the, the meetings and everything like this thing right here. Right. All serves to sustain the culture that we're, uh, you know, that we're living in. So if we had these cool tools and slapped them around the building and didn't talk about our values or have the daily meetings, do you think this stuff would stick or not? No, you'd never look at it. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any other thoughts or observations about what it's like to work here? Yeah, employee empowerment is key. Okay. And it really means something to you or not? It really does. Okay. I've been coming from too many places where the boss it's what his word is and nothing else. And to have, to be able to come on the floor my first day and say, hey, what's going on here? Why do we do it this way? Couldn't we change it to do it this way? To have the freedom to say that and speak your mind yeah. and be wrong is yeah, You fantastic. said something earlier today, what was it? Uh, Xylem is a good place. Xylem to... is the best place to be wrong. Yeah. Amazing, the best place to be wrong. Remember, fail, learn to fail or fail to learn. Uh, I'm gonna end it here. Last uh, six weeks ago, six months ago, I was in Japan with Richio Shingo, Shigeo Shingo's son. So we have Taichiono and Shigeo Shingo's, two of the founding fathers of the Toyota production system. And I was with his son, and his son was the former president of Toyota China. And I asked him a question. And he gave one of the most profound answers I've ever heard. And I was almost shocked that he said what he said. But I asked him, what is the Toyota production system? Here's his answer. And I sit down next to you and I ask you what you do, and you tell me, I'm an expert in the Toyota production system, and I said to you, what is that? How would you describe that? You know nothing, and I should tell them, tell you. Oh, okay, I should tell you what the TPS is. Ah. TPS is the accumulation of small ideas of everybody. It's a, it's a... Wow. Did you just hear that? <laughs> the accumulation of small ideas from everyone, from the former president of Toyota China, Shigeo Shingo's son. Boy, do we like to make it complicated. The accumulation of small ideas from everyone. Thank you very much.